Well, I am exceedingly chuffed and pleased. I made this tripod. I had the spare pair of binoculars lying around. I mounted it on this frame. 3D printed, my first 3D print, printed a little frame for my cell phone camera. What's quite nice about it is I can just pop out the camera like this and it fits snugly in here so I just push it in and there although it can't focus on anything at the moment would be what we would see we just enlarge it and there would be our view but obviously with binoculars looking at a green board you can't see anything so it works really great and what's also nice is it's got a swivel mount which we made and we're going to show you all that in this video let's just pan out that's as far in let's pan out there's the mountain and that's how far away it is so i'm pretty chuffed um, if I were to show you the same view, let's just show you the same view with other binoculars. That is what we're looking at. And somewhere on the top of that hill there was that trig beacon. So we are seeing, we are seeing a beacon on the top of that little hill there through our binoculars. I think it's pretty fantastic. Well, hello all. Today I'm going to make a mount for this um, binoculars. And then I'm going to make a tripod for it. And then I'm going to make a mount perhaps even 3d print something to put the uh, cell phone attach the cell phone behind you so we can photograph through our binoculars which are mounted on a tripod which i'm hoping to make all of these marked on our hole saw where we're going to drill so let's try and drill this look how nicely our binoculars fit they fit flush on this side and pretty nice on this side and what i had to do was i had to use two hole saws and countersink because this is a bit wider than this so we countersink we did two holes and now it's fitting pretty perfectly in there now we are going to make a tripod from this branch going to cut off Let's cut off a piece here. have the three legs for our tripod next I just clean the bark off the legs of my tripod so there we have our three now shaved legs next I'm going to draw a hole here for my hinge I'm going to try and use a screw that's the idea that it's going to do this
So there is how our um, tripod is going to swivel. Let's drill a hole in the center of our tripod stand. Also a hole down the center there. So that we can attach this to that. There it is. You can swivel. And now we just need our legs. I've drilled a hole in each end and put a screw in and now I'm going to cut the heads of each of those off. The heads of the screws, I find the holes that I drilled, poke them in and screw the legs on the last bit of the screw that's in sticking out. So, there now is our tripod. Well, there is our completed tripod with um, binoculars. We can bend it and it'll stay in the position that we want it to. So we've placed the binoculars in, we put an elastic band here. Well, look how nice this frame for my um, cell phone turned out beautiful first attempt at 3d printing slight curl at the edge there and the edge there but it's not serious but beautiful now we place the frame onto Now, I was reading Ecclesiastes, a wonderful to, book to read if you're feeling depressed, which I think Solomon was when he wrote it. And his, just, his favorite um, theme is vanity of vanity, all is vanity, and vexation of spirit. Now, vanity means everything we do, including this project, is basically just, it's going to come to nothing. It's a waste of time. And in the doing of the project, I must say, I did experience vexation, which means frustration, annoyance. It's just something's gall you. Oh, this doesn't work. That doesn't work. You've got to repeat it. In fact, I had to repair my mitre saw first because that was packing up. And so there's all this maintenance. And, and um, so uh, who am I to argue with the wisest man that ever lived that vanity of vanity? Everything is vanity. There's nothing that one can really do in a day that is not just a total waste of time. But there is one thing I would say, and that is be sensitive to the other's needs. You know, people are so remarkably in their own little selfish little bubble. And someone might ask you for something that's very important for them. You know, maybe a lift, maybe... Maybe they just ask you, that fruit tree there, would you mind if I could pick some of that fruit? And you, you might um and ah and say no or whatever. Or someone might ask you just a small favor. And frankly, 
of all things in the universe that counts that small favor, just being receptive and willing to listen to other people's needs. Now I think about Christ. He had no needs. God has no needs. He just went around solving the needs of other people, making, turning water to wine, turning, multiplying the loaves and the fishes, throwing out demons, healing, this and that. He was always, whatever he was doing, he was prepared to drop it to go and help people. For example, if someone needed healing, he would be prepared to, and it meant a lot of walking, tired. He must have been very tired. So his was a life of service. And I'm just saying, of all the th everything is vanity, but those acts of service are noted in that book that's kept in heaven, and we will be rewarded one day for that. So that's the only thing that we're going to take with us, and that's the only thing that's not vanity. Vanity means this whole world and everything in it, everything in our little selfish bubble is going to pass away. So be sensitive to the needs of others. I find other people are just not sensitive to the needs of other people. And I was always quite good at buying presents for people because when they were speaking and they said, oh, you know, I'd love to have a, an electric carving knife or something. Ah, I made a mental note of that. Someone, this person wants an electric carving knife. So for their next birthday, they would get an electric carving knife. Maybe it'd be from a... From a Hospice store, it might be second hand, but at least it was something that they wanted. So if you are sensitive, make it your life goal to be sensitive and listening to the needs. Oh, this person just says they want something, they need something. If only I had something, and maybe you can make it happen. You're the dream come true. What's it? Make a wish foundation. Maybe you could be the person that just supplies that little need. And especially, say, beggars come knocking on your door and they look thin and they look hungry give them something give them half a loaf of bread what is it how's it going to hurt you in your grand fantastic opulent self-indulgent lifestyle it's just gonna it's gonna diminish you nothing so that's the only thing that's not vanity of vanities and boy it will relieve a lot of frustration and misery and wow the way that people suffer in this in this world and it is a great and beautiful creation and it's a wonderful world but wow it's not getting easier